Hello and welcome to this episode of Midlife Men with me, Philip Briscoe. Today, I'm joined by Shay Doran. Shay is a men's coach, so he helps men overcome sexual performance anxiety and erection problems, amongst other things. So Shay, welcome. Perhaps we could start then by you sharing your story, you know, how you got to where you are now. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try and condense this, <laughs> summarize 10 years, probably down into a, a, a minute or two. So um, let's say there was life before 2018 and then there was life after 2018. So life before 2018 was 12 years in banking. On the surface level, everything appeared great in life in terms of nice house, nice car, could buy what I wanted to, go where I wanted to in the world, you know, these kind of things, everything looked great. And actually, I had a really bad relationship with porn and with sex. I thought that was all very normal. I thought, well, every guy watches porn, it's normal to engage in regular hookups. And uh, I didn't actually realize the amount of destruction that was causing in my life. And I wasn't going to realize that for another at least five years or so. Uh, And then fast forward to 2018, I decided to quit corporate, the corporate world, travel the world, get a backpack on and travel the world. I was in a relationship at this point. And fast forward a few years, I mean, that experience just totally changed my life. Anybody that's traveled will know that traveling is an incredible experience. So yeah, that, that opened my mind to the whole world of taking my life in the direction that I wanted to and realizing that I wasn't just this kind of cog in the machine of the corporate world that I could design the future for myself and step out on my own two feet. Going back to the addiction to porn, what sort of frequency, you know, what was the intensity of that addiction? Yeah, this is an interesting question. It's one that comes up quite a lot. So for me personally, I would say it was generally a a daily thing, not always daily. Sometimes it could be more than once daily. Sometimes it could be less than that. It's more so, as now I understand it, about the the relationship that we have with porn as opposed to the, the frequency of it. It's what kind of patterns am I creating in my mind? Am I creating a pattern that says, right, porn releases more, is more enjoyable than sex with an actual person? There's multiple needs that porn meets, which hopefully we'll be able to get into throughout today to discuss why that can happen and why it happens to so many men. So yeah, for me, I would say that's where the the frequency was, but over a long period of time, you know, I think the statistics now is something like by the age of eight, 80% of boys have watched porn because it's so accessible now. So there's no hiding from this. And I think I was part of the first generation that had access to smartphones and high-speed internet. So it was all there immediately, whatever you wanted to see for free. So it was, um, yeah, immediately accessible. And maybe we get into this in a bit, but was it informing your choices? You know, were you choosing porn over other things? No, I wouldn't say I was choosing porn over sex. As, As far as I... When I look back on that, I wouldn't say I was doing that, but I would say it was, it was impacting. It was one of the factors that had started then after uh, a few years after 2018 had started to impact performance in the bedroom. And I had no idea. I had no idea. All I knew was that I had this sense of frustration with my life and that why wasn't my life going in the direction that I wanted it to. I noticed that I was pushing people away or feeling quite agitated when it came to conversations with people and this is all effects that not only porn it was not porn wasn't the number one thing there was other things as well which happy to cover but I would say those were the main factors that it was impacting in my life I was you know had this sense of frustration why is my life not going in the direction that I wanted it to and then also started to notice impacts in the bedroom in terms of erection quality and performance what was the trigger then that where you thought right i need to to stop and i need to it was go, was going traveling your you know you you tried to kind of change your habits by going traveling or was were there, were there alternative triggers to, to making that decision so I, I it kind of happened in steps so traveling opened my mind to the world when i came back from this first year of traveling i knew that i didn't want to go back to the corporate world 
I wanted to do something for myself where I could be location independent. I had no idea, had no idea what to do. I just had this voice saying to me, just get back out into the world and learn. So I started to listen to podcasts, read books. I hadn't read books for years and years, but started to read mindset, self-development books, go to seminars. And then I felt like this whole expansion of my mind just happened, which then led me to getting a coach. And this is the ultimate thing that then led to the trigger being pulled. So it was that kind of step-by-step journey of traveling first, then not knowing what to do, but just knowing I needed to learn more taking my learning about myself to a whole nother level, which led to a coach, and then a conversation happened. And how did you find the coach? How did you find a coach? Well, the coach was through, I'm sure many people who listen to this are familiar with a guy called Tony Robbins, who's a self-development guru, let's say that expert. And um, he has a, a set of coaches that work on his models, on his principles. And I went to a few of his seminars, really liked the uh, the way that he looked at human psychology and human behavior. And uh, I'd already made the commitment to myself that I wanted to take my life to the next level from where I, from what I thought was possible previously. Now I realized there was a whole different kind of life that was possible for myself, but I needed some guidance and help to get there. And so uh, one of the offers that he had was a, a coaching package with one of his, with one of his trained coaches. So that's how I got into that. And then tell us about, you know, what happened once you was seeing a coach you know, how, how did that take you to the next the next stage yeah so related to the sexual performance anxiety and porn and sex and erection so i had this uh, i was with the coach for her name was linda i was with her for 12 months we had a 12 months package working together it wasn't until month 11 that i mentioned anything about sex hookups porn because i was so embarrassed i did not know what to say i didn't know i didn't want to talk about it i think especially as men we think i just need to figure this out for myself and get it sorted i don't need to ask for help i don't need to ask for guidance and there are times in our life where we absolutely do need guidance and need help when we don't have the the tools or what we've tried hasn't been working then it's a hint of i need some external support here so um the reason why I mentioned it is because, as I said, I got to this point where I was just really frustrated. The businesses that I was trying weren't working. I was questioning myself and it felt like my self-esteem was through the floor. And I'd never really felt like this before. I was always a confident guy, you know, had a successful career in banking and uh, was just thinking like, what the hell is going on? Why can't I figure this out? And so it got to a point where eventually I we had a conversation and she asked me to do this drawing of three circles and I had to draw the size of the circle to represent the time and energy that I was putting into these three different areas. One was business, one was self-development and one was relationships. And uh, when I spoke about, I'm just going to go back a tiny bit here. When I spoke about going traveling, I was in a relationship a couple of years later. That finished because part of it was because of what was going on in the bedroom. So that relationship had finished and then porn use had just escalated, basically. Relationship with sex, a bad relationship with sex had just escalated. So coming back to these three circles, I was single at that point and had been for a couple of years. But when I drew these three circles, I saw the relationship one was like three times the size of the other two circles. And I looked at that and I thought, but this isn't, something's not right here because I'm not in a relationship and it doesn't feel good that there's that much time and energy going into it. And that's when literally I, I, I can't, I can only describe it as a, it felt like the floor just opened and swallowed me up. And I just had this massive slap around the face is how it felt of realizing, oh my God, all of this frustration, all of what is going on right now is linked to porn hookups, this whole area of, you know, sexual intimacy. That was the, the night. It was 2000 and, 21 December 2021 I remember the phone call I remember the room that I was in and and that was the night that I made two commitments one was to get it sorted for myself because I knew it was a mindset thing it wasn't a medical thing that was going on it was mindset as it is for most men and then the second thing was to the second commitment was to help other men once I'd figured it out for myself of how to get it sorted it was then to help other men to do the same
why do you think? I mean, there's obviously a huge proliferation of porn. It's very easy to get to access. But why do you think that you know people get really addicted to porn and then almost you know make, not making choices as you said earlier, but you know are finding that they are getting more from porn than perhaps their own relationships? Why do you think that is? Well, there's the obvious. There's the dopamine part to it. So I'll talk about that briefly and then i'll talk about the other needs that porn actually meets which i think is the more important part so there's the dopamine bit which most most of us may already know right when we're watching porn it's not like real life sex Uh, it doesn't happen that way but our brain doesn't know the difference our brain doesn't know that we're watching it through a screen so the same chemicals are released in our body as if we were actually with somebody but it's supercharged, right? As we know, porn doesn't, it's not about a build up. It cuts straight to the action scene. The per, it's not about stopping or that's enough. It's always more, more, more. And there's all other things going on on the screen as well. We can watch whatever kind of content we want to immediately, instantly like that. So the level of simulation is unnatural. The level of dopamine that's released in the body is unnatural at this point. And what happens over time is usually the type of porn that is watched will become a bit more you know, edgy or a bit more extreme or exploring in other categories because we're trying to chase the same dopamine high, just like with drugs, right? A drug addict doesn't usually start on heroin. They'll start on something softer and then it will build up over time. Same with gambling, right? It doesn't start with let's put 100 grand down in the casino. It starts with let's put a few dollars or a few pounds and chasing the high. It's exactly the same thing with porn. And then what happens with over time is it comes to real life sex and the same amount of dopamine, it's not possible to release the same amount of dopamine. So we're not able to get hard. We're not able to get as stimulated or turned on in that moment because our mind is used to a whole different level of getting turned on. So is the mind blocking the kind of physiological reaction? I mean, what stops, you know, the the erection? Is the mind blocking what should actually happen naturally? Well, the mind is saying this just isn't doing it for me. And so whilst, yes, the chemicals are still being released, like dopamine is the main one here, it's just not being released at the same level as what it is when we watch porn because it's so much more, it's hyper-stimulating. The body's still doing what it should be doing, but it's just, it's doing it at, let's say, a level one instead of a level 10. And when it's with porn, it's at a level 10. That's what's going on with dopamine. But there's also other needs that porn is meeting that's important to be aware of as well. So there's this, these three other needs that porn meets. The first one is we don't have the fear of rejection. Right? There's not the fear of rejection. When a guy is alone watching porn, there's no fear of the person walking out of the room. There's no fear of them saying no. They say the opposite. I want more and more, right? So there's the, the fear of rejection is not there. Second thing is performance anxiety it doesn't exist when we're watching porn. Right? There is not someone there. We're not thinking, oh my god, uh, I've got to stay hard, or or what if I'm going to come too quickly, or what if I'm going to not do this right, or whatever it may be. So there's not a sense of that when we're watching porn because we're alone, safe in our own room there's nobody else there that we're having to cater for and this leads into the third point as well we don't have to worry about are they enjoying it am i doing this right are they having a good time is this what they like or is it something else that i don't know we just don't have these kinds of thoughts so those three things the no rejection no performance anxiety and not having to worry about if the person is enjoying it or not what they ultimately equal is certainty Right. When we don't have to think about those things, it gives us a high degree of certainty in that moment of watching porn and certainty equals safety. Right. And when we're, this is what we look for as human beings all the time. Am I safe? Am I loved? These are the two needs that we're searching for all the time. Am I safe? Am I loved? So when we're watching porn, we're highly safe. Everything's very safe, but it doesn't take us in the long term where we want to be going. In terms of discussing problems with, with you know, men talking to their, their partners about this, I imagine generally it's something which is perhaps either kept secret or 
you know, a lot of men wouldn't wouldn't dream of discussing openly. Certainly, if you know, as you said, if 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 they're properly addicted to porn. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's you know, with the, the work that I do, there's usually two porn plays a part, but it's totally possible for men to be and women as well to be uh, have porn addiction. By the way, but usually I, I I just work with men. So porn addiction is one thing because guys can be addicted to porn and still get hard in the bedroom and not have challenges there. Right. Generally, where I step in is where things have spilled over and it's now causing an impact on the quality of the erection. And porn can be one element to it. It's not always just porn. So hopefully we we can talk about some of the other factors as well outside of porn. Uh, But you're right. The conversations, this seems like a taboo topic, right? Culturally or as a society, we don't talk about these kind of things. We know it's there. It's this kind of elephant in the room. But when it then leads to not able to get hard, we're not able to have sex and avoiding initiating intimacy because of the awkwardness or embarrassment, right? The relationship's not going in a good direction. And then it obviously becomes very obvious. Even at that point, many couples still don't talk about it. It's just this like, we just avoid it or we just don't, you know, we never talk about it because it feels embarrassing or awkward. Is it? Traditionally, you know, is it symptomatic of a relationship breakdown or perhaps a relationship getting boring? Or, you know, can can this happen anyway? You know, can you get addicted to, to other areas apart from your own relationship, even if your relationship seems to be, you know, in, in a good state? This is a, reg- a great question. I think there's probably quite a few different levels to this, different answers, different takes on it. Um, my understanding from, from what I've read and what I understand so far is that we're all on the spectrum of addiction in some way, shape or form, right? Whether that is shopping, smartphones, porn, gambling, whatever it may be, the food, it, there's multiple things, right? That we're all addiction, an addict, it can seem like this kind of person that society has cast away and we think of a drug drug addict injecting themselves on the street when we hear the word addict but the reality is we all have our addictions in some way shape or form uh, and there's obviously levels of extremity so i think we all have a propensity for it because of the cycle that's created whether it's social media whether it's porn whether it's what it's quite easy to get into the cycle because of the needs that addiction meets so that's one thing. Is it because of a relationship breakdown sometimes? Yes, it is. I was listening to an interview with Stephen Bartlett and Esther Perel the other day that this one line really stood out to me was, what part of yourself do you bring back home into the relationship? Usually we give everything to business, work, whatever it may be, and we, bring, we walk back through the door with whatever's left over. And that is a recipe for you know, a kind of 50-50 relationship. And so it becomes understandable why needs are not being met. So other things start to come into the picture, porn being one of those things, infidelity being another one of those things, because someone else is giving me or something else is giving me a higher form of stimulation. So actually, I wanted to talk about that. You you, you mentioned earlier that, you know, porn is not the only thing that uh, can cause problems with you know performance anxiety erections etc what else you know is happening yeah so certainly with a lot of men that i work with many of them are in either senior positions in the workplace or have their own businesses so there is this fairly high degree of high pressure in terms of in their life in multiple areas whether it's pressure on their business whether it's pressure uh, around finances and income whether it's pressure to perform when they were younger in sports or academics or whatever it may be. And I'm yet to find a guy where this hasn't been the case of where there have been these external pressures, most of which have started from when we were at a younger age. You know, it could be being compared to why can't you be like this other kid or being ridiculed or shamed or guilted for not being good enough in the classroom or whatever it may be. Right. So these start to sow seeds of doubt of I'm not good enough, right? My performance in the sport or whatever it may be is not good enough. And then what happens is we go into these running our own businesses or higher senior positions and there's more pressure 
higher expectations, higher stress that can come with with that is just a fact. And so when one or two things don't go right, there's this channel that is pathway that is reignited in our minds that basically says, I'm not good enough. It's performance anxiety, it's pressure of performance, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in financially, whether it's in the bedroom. It is this pressure of performance and the anxiety of what if I'm not good enough? And so usually outside of the porn, these are the other things that play a factor is that when for some guys, they've let me give an example of a client that I've worked with who for years and years and years had absolutely no challenges in the bedroom. Five kids married for 30, 40 years. To him, it seemed like it was all of a sudden one night. It just happened. Right. And what it actually was is that there was these multiple other factors going on that was high pressure in the business. He was thinking of uh, buying his partner out of the business. The partner didn't really want to. And that was a very difficult time. And there was also some external pressures going on with his kids as well. And so what often as men, what we don't realize is that there's other contexts that can impact our ability in the bedroom. What we can just lock into is oh my God, I haven't been able to get hard. What's wrong with me? I've got a problem. Something is wrong with me. And then we carry that into the second time of like, I I remember when this happened last time, that can't happen again. What if it happens again? Pressure, 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 pressure. And the thing that we don't want to happen happens. We lose the erection. So you, you know, you work with men now to help with these sorts of issues. You know, what sort of things can you do then to, to kind of reverse or change the way that that men think about, you know, their performance in the bedroom? So I think the first thing is if you're, well, if you're a guy and you're listening to this and you have experienced performance challenges in the bedroom is there can be a medical element to it. So I think it's important to always just go and get a blood check, get a testosterone check as well. Most of the times, let's say 80% of the men that I speak to, it's not medical, it's mindset, right? So this is where most of it is. And the easy thing to jump to, which we have to be aware when we go and see a doctor or a primary caregiver can be pills, right? Here's some pills for you to take. And then that can create its own dependency cycle of having pills. Pills does not fix this when it's up here. Uh, I may give some short term relief, but it certainly doesn't fix things for the long run. And actually what happens is the pills end up not working. So I think the first thing is it's wise to go and get a general health check to make sure that there's no medical things going on there. So that's the first thing. Second thing that I would say is then to try and take a step back and look at the context of the situation, right? To look at when this happened, and this is for men that perhaps feel like it just came out of nowhere, right? So to take a step back and to think, what else was going on in my life in that moment that could have in some way, shape or form impacted what happened that, that night in the bedroom, right? So to try and step back and take a look at a broader context. So that's for the men that feel like it's come out of nowhere for the men that have experienced this over a prolonged period of time. So this may be going back to the first time they had sex, it not being a good experience or uh, things have happened on and off, but pretty much consistently over time. What I would say there is you do not have to accept that this is just how things are. You do not have to accept that, oh, because I'm 50 or because I'm 60, is this is just because of my age. No, this it's, it's, it's comfortable to hide behind it being an age thing. But I've worked with guys from 17 up to 70 and we've got this sorted. So it's not so much an age and you do not have to accept that this is just how life is going to be. But it is about getting the right tools and strategies to get this sorted. And yes, it can feel awkward and uncomfortable to have a conversation with somebody about this. But my advice would be, what do you want for the rest of your life? You know, do you want it to just be this way? And potentially it holds us back from being able to have a fulfilling connection, a passionate sex, which everybody deserves to experience that. You know, do you want to not have those things for the sake of having one or two awkward conversations to be able to get this sorted? And how do we kind of normalize that conversation? Because as you said, it's awkward. 
you know, it probably takes a lot to go and talk to somebody. You know, how do we normalize it so it's just, you know, it's, it doesn't have that stigma? You know, you could perhaps go and talk to your, your mates about it and, and, you know, when you're out with them. Well, I think it starts with us all as individuals, actually. I think it starts with realizing that there's not going to be somebody that comes and has this conversation and makes us feel safe. It is. It always starts with us having the conversation, whether it is with a partner, whether it's sitting down and saying, we both know this has been going on for a while and I don't have all the answers to it, but I know that I want to for us to get this sorted and for us to build back what we had in the spark that we had in the bedroom. So whether it's a conversation like that or whether it's a conversation with your kid to see, you know, to tell them about porn, to open up, to make them feel like they can talk about these types of things. And the only way that they'll feel safe to do that is if you lead, if we each lead as individuals and if we make sure that in that leadership there's no judgment or shame so if we've got as you said earlier you know if you've got eight-year-old kids who are exposed to, to porn, is that you know is there a tsunami of these sorts of problems you know coming as those children you know grow up through their teens and into adulthood i mean it's more prevalent now than it was say 20 years ago i mean are you starting to see an increase as as you know as people kind of get older who were exposed at a young age to to you know extreme pornography yes unfortunately i am and you know you only need to go onto platforms like reddit where people can go on and it's a bit more anonymous right so there's not the revealing of the identity and you see guys on there that are 12 13 14 15 upwards that do not know what to do and they are struggling with this they know what it is. They know it's because of the relationship with porn and they don't know what to do or who to speak to. I spoke to a guy earlier this week who was 17 and he's wanting to have sex for the first time with his girlfriend and he's not able to get hard and he knows it's because of porn. And it's uh, so, yeah, I do believe we're just at the tip of the iceberg, especially with the younger generation. And that's sad. Because you can imagine as a 16, 17, 18 year old wanting to explore sexually for the first time and you're not able to, that's pretty shit. That's tough as a guy to deal with. Like that's difficult. And the only way, I believe the only way that we're able to shift this because porn isn't going away anytime soon. The money that that industry makes is, is crazy. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And yes, there's going to be helpful things that come in like age restrictions etc there's always going to be ways around ways around this so it would be unrealistic to think that there's going to be a place in time where in the near future where kids just don't watch porn right that's not happening they will have access to it it's about the conversations that we have in schools at home for us to be able to not let this have a tidal wave impact of mental health self-doubt performance anxiety that then I mean, can you imagine carrying that from the age of 15, 16 for years and years and years, especially in those years where we're still forming and learning ourselves as an individual? It's Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as, you know, as a parent myself, I think it's probably easy just to sleepwalk your way through, through never broaching these topics. And in fact, you know, as you're quite rightly saying, you know, you need, you need to do that. You need to kind of step up and try and put a kind of normal angle on, on, on things earlier on to stop, you know, as you said, problems when you get older and, and beyond. So you said earlier, you know, always go and see a doctor and get, get yourself checked physically. But then what do you do then? I mean, as you said, you know, pills, blue pills perhaps aren't going to do the job. So what, what do you do if you want some help from someone like yourself? You know, how do you go and find you or people who can, help you know with those challenges and and readdress you know performance and and how men come into the bedroom and all those things that are that they've experienced you know through their lives first i just want to say if you are a parent who's watching this and you're thinking how do i speak to my child about it there's a very good website that i came across called fight the new drug and they have a lot of resources free resources on there so i'd recommend 
that's a good place to check out fight the new drug okay so we go and speak to the doctor the doctor says everything's fine it's all mindset or here's some viagra or cialis for you to take and and you're feeling like i don't want to do that i don't want to have to depend on pills then what so the good news is, is that there are then options right whether it's coaching whether it's therapy there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, which you may have already been spending out countless hours watching. But the, the reality is now it is about having a conversation with somebody, to, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody to get this sorted, right? There's also apps out there as well. In my experience, the apps are helpful additions to the conversations, but it's the one-to-one -one conversations where it's personalized to you, right? We can actually understand what's going on why are things where they're at right now and how do we just shift that and get it sorted as quickly as possible so i would say the main the main approaches when it comes to on the mindset piece is coaching therapy both have a let's say similar models but a very different approach therapy will is more about conversational base let's take time there's not really a time limit on it it's let's just have conversations and explore the past or explore new ways of thinking Coaching, which is my personal bag, because that's what worked for me, which is why I choose chose that route, is more results focused. So it's like, this is where we're at. This is the result that we want. So whether that's getting hard in the bedroom, as an example, and how do we get there as quickly and as safely as possible for the long term? So I would say a good place to start is a platform like YouTube, right? And just researching, finding, and find somebody that resonates that you feel like they get it and they understand it. I think the biggest ad tip adv of advice that I would give is ideally you want to be speaking to somebody that has lived this, that understands it and has got the results in their own life. So for men listening that, that uh, you know, relate to what we've been talking about, it's not permanent. There are ways of, uh, of resolving it and having a normal, enjoyable sex life but it's understanding those factors that are affecting you, whether it's porn addiction on one end or whether it's other factors that are affecting your performance at the other, maybe around stress and anxiety and depression and all those other things. But, you know, you need to you, – would you say people would struggle to fix it themselves? Yes. I couldn't fix it myself. Most of the guys that I – well, all of the guys that I've worked with, as much as we like to think – I just want to get this sorted, right? Again, it's similar to what we were saying about the age thing. It's a blanket of comfort. It's a blanket of safety to say, oh, you know, I it, it worked. It was a bit better this time. I know probably it's not exactly where I want it to be in terms of the bedroom. Things went okay or a bit better in the bedroom this time. So maybe it's getting there. Or I just perhaps need to read a bit more in this area or do a bit here. And the question is, how many years do we spend in this space, right? This goes on and on and on. And I know that because that's where I was, right? No, I think if I can just get this information or if I could just watch this video, if I just read this book. And the reality was that nothing was actually changing. It was actually getting worse over time, right? So I think this is the question that we have to ask ourselves is, am I in this comfort loop at the moment because it feels difficult? And it does feel difficult. And I want to acknowledge that, that it can feel vulnerable to talk to somebody about this. It can feel scary. But actually, what's on the other side of that conversation is getting this sorted. So, um, yeah, we do not, we definitely do not have to think that this is just how life is, or it's because of my age, or it's just, you know, if I can just read a bit more. No, there is a way through this. And can it lead to, you know, performance anxiety? You know, can that lead to other types of mental ill health? I'm assuming, I'm assuming it can if it happens, you know, over a, a long period of time. You know, with performance anxiety comes a shitload of shame and doubt and self guilt all the time. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. What if I can't satisfy my partner? What if I'm not good enough for the person I want to attract into my life? Who am I? Am I, I'm not even a man. You know, we can question ourselves, am I even a real man if I can't do this? And so imagine that stacked over years and years and years. We basically hammer, you know, like the whack-a-mole game. I imagine it like that, but we hammer ourselves down, down and down and down into the ground 
until we're just this kind of shell that feels like I don't feel myself anymore or who am I in the world or what's my purpose in the world and we've become quite passive and detract from relationships avoid initiating avoid putting ourselves out there because we have all of these fears all of this shame all of this guilt and I mean it's that stacked over years is not going to lead anywhere good and also if you're in a relationship right now the relationship's not going to go in a good direction right there's not that that only goes one way and it's not a good one well thank you shay that what you've done is you know shine a light on what is a sensitive topic uh often difficult for men to acknowledge let alone talk about certainly to other people so you know talking to you thank you for sharing your experience and your you know your views and and, and you know the advice that you've given um, so hopefully anyone listening to this who is who does resonate with with these sorts of issues can you know try and find a, a one one step forward and we'll put the links in in the podcast notes uh, and also the link to your websites as well if anyone wants to talk to you one on one but yeah well, thank you very much thanks for joining us today Great. Well, thank you for having me. And yes, whether it's me or somebody else, just get onto YouTube. Just look at who resonates, who gets this. And if you felt like this resonates, then as Philip said, head to you'll see either link to the YouTube or the website in the notes. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Midlife Men, where my guest has been Shay Doran. If you want to contact Shay directly, visit his website, shay-doran.com or his YouTube channel, at Shea Dash Dora. These links, along with other resources Shay referred to in the episode, will be in the episode notes. If you have a suggestion for a topic you'd like us to cover in the podcast, or if you have a story you'd like to share, then please contact me either on Twitter, at MidlifeMen, or email me at midlifemen01 at gmail.com. Join me next time when we talk to other midlife men about their stories and maybe you'll find that they resonate with you. Thank you.